Today we're taking a look at NZXT's F Series X performance fans, the F120X, the F240X and the F360X. NZXT claims that these are their most advanced fans yet with liquid crystal polymer construction, ultra tight tolerances and a magnetic levitation hybrid bearing designed to push airflow while keeping noise under control. We'll check out the design, performance numbers and of course whether these fans are worth the upgrade for your next build. So let's dive in. So these are NZXT's latest high performance fans. They're available in several different shapes and sizes and in either black or white color schemes. The F120X is just a single 120 millimeter fan. You can pick that up from Scan priced at £39.98 per fan. There's also the F240X, technically two 120 millimeter fans all in one. That's priced at £74.99. And then there's also the 360 so the f360 x 320 millimeter fans in one frame also available at scan price at 109 pounds 99 the f series x fans are also available in 140 millimeter version so you've got the f140 x and the f280 x we will be concentrating on the 120 millimeter versions for this review though so before we get stuck in, just a quick reminder that there will be a written page for this review over at kitguru.net where you can find more details, specifications and our fan testing methodology. Also to those who enjoy the coverage and have not subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to do that. It helps us to keep bringing you the in-depth KitGuru content that we're known for and you'll also get notifications of all our new videos. NZXT F Series X fans feature liquid crystal polymer construction and optimized blade design for strong airflow and static pressure, a custom hybrid bearing for quiet and durable operation, an advanced three-phase six-pole motor for precise, efficient cooling across different speeds, and a polished design with subtle RGB aluminium accents, and easy installation thanks to the all-in-one frame design of the F2 and F360X models. So let's take a closer look at these fans. The F360X is the one that I want to concentrate on most because I guess this possibly will be the most popular one nowadays with more cases supporting 360 millimeter radiators and 360 millimeter floor and front mounted fans, etc. The 240 may also be useful for 240 millimeter radiators and smaller micro ATX, maybe mini ITX cases. I guess the 120X will be also popular for running as a rear exhaust, but the 360X is the one I'm gonna take the closest look at. So liquid crystal polymer construction for both the fan blades and the fan frame. And NZXT says that extra rigidity in the fan blades will help with airflow and also help to reduce noise. We'll take a look at the airflow the thermal performance and the noise levels of these fans later in the video. The fans also have a very tight tolerance on the fan blade tip to frame clearance. That's set at 0.5 millimeters, which is said to reduce turbulence and air leakage, which again should help maximize airflow and increase overall static pressure of the fans. The bearing is a hybrid design, so it combines magnetic levitation and fluid dynamics. So again, NZXT says that's to help reduce friction and vibration and also to improve the lifespan of the bearing inside these fans. If we're talking numbers, so the maximum speed of these fans is up to 3,100 RPM, so they are high speed fans. Maximum airflow is 104 cubic feet per minute per fan, and the maximum static pressure is 7.53 millimeters H2O. Again, that is per fan. And with both the 360 and the 240X, they have this all in one frame design, so you've got 320 millimeter fans mounted into a single frame. Couple of reasons for that. Obviously it helps pr improve the aesthetics of the system. There's less wiring, obviously. These fans don't need to be connected together manually. They come all as one piece in this 360 and 240 millimeter version, which also means 
less insulation screws you can see both of these only have four screw holes for mounting so only four screws rather than 12 screws on the 360 so it should be also speed up installation time too and obviously because they're all in a single frame pre-connected all the wiring is pre-wired inside the frame and it just comes to a single wire at the end so not only will they be quicker to install, the install should look neater with less wiring. They do also feature some visual enhancements. So you've got RGB lighting on both the front and the rear of the fans. Quite subtle RGB lighting, but it is there. It can be configured either using motherboard software or using NZXT cam. You can also see there's some aluminium accents on here. Quite difficult to pick them out on these black versions because they've been anodized a similar color to the frame but in the white version you can quite clearly see the aluminium accents there in uh, silver anodized silver again on the white version the rgb lighting is the same on both sides and although it's quite a square looking design you've got these rounded corners here which again enhance the aesthetics a couple of nzxt logos on here and there's also an nzxt logo on the fan frame at the back there one thing to notice these are only available in forward blade version. So if you do want to run them, say on the floor of the case, as an intake, you'll have to flip the fan over rather than changing the blade or changing to a reverse blade version, which means you do see these extra bits of fan frame here, which aren't the best looking things, but because it comes pre-mounted in just all a single frame, it does look better, I think, than three individual fans, even though you don't have the reverse blade design. I think they are good looking fans, especially when you've got them installed into the system and the RGB lighting is illuminated. They should be easy to install with less screws and less wiring. And according to the official numbers, they should have the specifications to perform as good as some of the other fans we've tested so far. In terms of accessories included with the fans, all you get with the 360 and 240 is this cable here, because you can see it's a proprietary connection on the end there. That should plug in directly to the NZXT hub if you want to use the NZXT hub to control the fans and the cam software. But NZXT does also include this adapter. So that connects quite easily to the wiring on the end of the cable. And then that splits out to a standard four pin PWM header and a standard three pin five volt ARGB connection if you want to connect the RGB to the hub, but still control the fan speed with the motherboard, then it has this hub connection here. Cyberpower PC are bringing Christmas magic to gamers everywhere. We've got giveaways all the way up until Christmas, Santa approved deals on our best builds, and even more surprises to come this festive season. So check out our website, keep an eye on our socials for more information, and win yourself some freebies. So that's just a quick rundown of some of the features of the fans. If you want to check that out in more detail, as I say, head over to kitguru.net, and look at the written page. We want to get into looking at the performance numbers because there's a lot to go through. We're looking at the noise, the thermal performance, case temperatures, and some smoke visualizations. The test system is the same that we've used previously for testing fans. It's an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X 3D CPU. Motherboard is the ASRock X870E Tai Chi. Memory is 64 gigabytes, so two 32 gigabyte modules of G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5 6000. Storage is a one terabyte Corsair MP600 Elite PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. The power supply is a Seasonic Prime TX1600 Noctua edition. CPU cooler is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3360. And the chassis we've chosen is a Lian Li Langcool 3 in white. Before we dive into looking at the thermal performance, case temperatures, and noise output, we've run the smoke visualization again to look at the airflow. With the fans running at 1400 RPM, the airflow from the NZXT fans is generally smooth and well directed, with fresh air being efficiently pulled in from the front intake and hot air quickly exhausted through both the rear and top of the case. The smoke shows a strong, consistent flow along the main airflow channels, indicating that the fans are effective at moving air through the case and preventing major hotspots around the CPU and GPU areas. Some 
turbulence is visible in a few localised areas at the front. Incoming air occasionally interacted with the bottom fans, creating minor swirling patterns, while around the GPU pockets of slightly chaotic airflow formed. A small amount of smoke also escaped near the rear PCIe slot vents, suggesting that while the fans maintain strong overall airflow, a few corners of the case experience minor recirculation or backflow, even at this moderate speed. So it's interesting looking at those smoke tests. It does give you a better visualization of what the airflow is doing inside the case and how it's flowing through the case and exhausted out. Interesting to look at. Let's look at the thermal performance and noise and case temperatures. For this review, we test each fan at 100% PWM, 1400 RPM and 40 decibels noise normalized speeds. All tests use a manual CPU overclock with all core frequency and V core locked for consistency. For load testing, we run a combined CPU, GPU stress test for 30 minutes using 3D Mark Speedway and Cinebench simultaneously. Charts show the average temperatures from the last 10 minutes alongside thermal couple readings at the end. Noise is measured with a decibel meter 30 centimeters from the front of the system and airflow patterns are visualized using smoke tests at 1400 rpm. This methodology ensures a clear real world comparison of thermal performance, noise and airflow for each fan. So let's look at noise output first. At 100% PWM speed the NZXT F Series X are significantly louder than most other fans reaching 66.5 decibel bells at full speed, which is well above the quieter Noctua and Fantex, both below 54 decibels, only the Sudoku Mac 120 comes close at 67.3 decibels, making the NZXT one of the loudest options when pushed to 100% PWM. With fan speed fixed at 1400 RPM, the NZXT F Series X produce 46.1 decibels maximum noise, making them slightly louder than the Fantex, Noctua and Sudoku fans, which all measure between 45 and 45.6 decibels. While the difference is modest, it shows that even at moderate speed, the NZXT fans tend to generate a bit more noise, which could be noticeable in very quiet environments. Looking at case temperatures at 100% duty cycle, the NZXT F Series X fans keep the front intake at 21.7 degrees C, just behind the Sudoku Mac 120 at 21.5 degrees C. The rear and top AIO exhaust sit at 27 7.9 degrees C, moving heat out more effectively than the Fantex and Noctua, so the NZXT fans excel at keeping airflow balanced and preventing hotspots. In practice, the NZXT fans perform well. They may not give the absolute lowest front intake temperature, but their exhaust efficiency keeps the case consistently cool. With fans locked at 1400 RPM, the NZXT F Series X gives a front intake of 22.9 degrees C, the same as the Noctua, but slightly warmer than the others. The rear exhaust is 32.8 degrees C and the top AIO exhaust reaches 33.2 degrees C, the highest in this group. This indicates that at fixed moderate speed the NZXT fans are slightly less efficient at expelling heat compared with the others. In practical terms the NZXT fans still maintain reasonable airflow but they lag a little in case wide heat removal. The, the slightly higher exhaust temperatures suggest that for system running at fixed RPM, other fans may provide more effective cooling. Still, the NZXT fans remain a solid option. At 40 decibels noise normalized, the NZXT fans show a front intake of 24.3 degrees C, slightly warmer than the Sudoku and Fantex. The rear exhaust is 34.5 degrees C and the top AIO exhaust 36.6 degrees C, higher than Sudoku and Noctua but lower than Fantex in top exhaust. This suggests at quieter speed, Speeds, the NZXT fans are adequate but not the most efficient at moving heat out of the case. Overall the NZXT fans provide steady airflow and consistent case temperatures at low noise. They may not deliver the absolute coolest temperatures but their balanced exhaust ensures the system remains stable. Onto CPU and GPU thermals under load at full speed the NZXT F Series X deliver competent results with the CPU averaging 51 degrees C over ambient and the GPU 
CPU at 44 degrees C under combined load. These numbers place them very close to the best results on test with only a small 1 to 2 degrees C gap to the leading figures, suggesting that at high speed the fans are able to move sufficient air through the system to keep component temperatures in check. There's no obvious imbalance in behaviour either as both CPU and GPU temperatures track closely with the top performers. Overall at maximum fan speed the NZXT F Series X offers solid competitive performance. At a fixed 1400 RPM they deliver steady performance with the CPU averaging 57 degrees over ambient and the GPU 48 degrees C. That puts them a few degrees warmer than the other fans tested which generally sit in the 54 to 55 degrees C CPU and 46 to 47 degrees C GPU range. This suggests that when airflow is limited to a moderate fixed speed rather than maximum RPM the NZXT fans can't maintain the same competitive position seen at full PWM. Performance is still well within an acceptable range but the margin to the top of the chart increases slightly indicating the NZXT design may favour high speed operation to deliver its best results. The NZXT F Series X sits just behind its competitors in the noise normalised test running at 1150 RPM the CPU averages 60 degrees C over ambient and the GPU is 48 degrees C slightly warmer than the Fantex, Noctua and Sudoku fans which hover around 58 and 46 to 47 degrees C respectively. This shows that despite a reasonable RPM the NZXT fan design and airflow efficiency are a little less effective. In practical terms the difference isn't much but it's noticeable. The NZXT fan will handle combined loads adequately. The design may appeal aesthetically but for users chasing the lowest possible temperatures the other fans still hold a slight edge. So I think the way to look at these fans is if you want solid but not chart topping thermal performance but you are looking for aesthetics they will be a good option they may not give us the absolute best thermal performance figures when the speed is reduced to 1400 rpm or even noise normalized to 40 decibels but at maximum rpm they will compete with some of the very best fans but saying that performance isn't far off the others that we've tested so far and in real world terms you probably won't notice much of a difference using these fans compared to the Noctuas, the Fantex or the Sudoku fans. One thing you will notice though is the looks of these fans. They do look great in these all-in-one frames. They are easy to install, less wiring. They look very neat and tidy once installed and if you prioritise aesthetics over performance these probably will be a good choice. However, they are quite expensive, £109 for the 360 in comparison to the Sudoku fans, you can get three 120s for around £70 on Amazon, so they are quite expensive compared to the rest. The Noctua fans come in at about two for £55 and the Fantex for three of those are around about £80 in the UK, so you are paying a premium for the aesthetics and the looks and the ease of installation, but not quite getting the same performance compared to the others. So, as I say, if looks is more important than performance, these could be a good option. But if you want absolute outright performance with a little more hassle during installation and a bit more wiring, maybe the other fans we've tested so far would be a better option for you. So that's the NZXT F Series X performance fans. Let me know what you think of these fans in the YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this content, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And we're also on TikTok now, and if you want to catch up on all the other in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.